welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about what is your responsibility when it comes to AI and ethics, machine learning, programming? Well, when it comes to ethics and AI systems, the question to ask is whose responsibility is it to make sure that the data sets we use, the algorithms we create and apply, are designed and executed such that first, no harm is caused to individuals or groups. And secondly, that human well-being and even flourishing is achieved. Since ethics concerns how one ought to behave in a given situation, we cannot outsource our human responsibility to machines because doing so would be to discharge us of our accountability if and when an AI system causes harm or discriminates against people or ends up in bias. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means that the commitment to do no harm is the responsibility of each and every member of every AI or machine learning project. That goes from the product manager to the debugger to the end user quality tester and everyone in between. In fact, one of the most important things we can do is to communicate our concerns about the possibility of bias and discrimination. This may involve alerting your entire team, or it could involve just alerting one person who's responsible for that decision, such as the project manager, the coder, or the data scientist. Now, some ways this might actually look include pointing out specific ways that you have recognized that the data set or the real world application of the AI system may cause some harm. For example, perhaps you feel that the data source is too narrow or it's one-sided, or perhaps the data set does not consider possible outcomes that you've just discovered are indeed possible given the workflow or the program model or the algorithm in use. Or perhaps the data is not scalable. So while there are no obvious potential harmful outcomes given the scope of the project at hand, future possibilities of expanded use of the program or the data set or the algorithm could indeed cause or result in potential harm. Now, if you're able, and if your team is designed to permit it, one of the best things you can do is to suggest or offer an alternative programming model a coding model or a different use of a data set that might actually counteract the bias that you've discovered. Or you might have to appeal to the entire team to figure out a solution. But knowing what you should and even wanting to speak up is often easier said than done. In some circumstances, while embracing ethical principles is often publicly encouraged, actually doing so may privately interfere with the other specifications of the project or the project's target milestones. This is all the more the case if the team is under the pressure to deliver a new AI-involved product or application before the competition does. So if you're finding all of this challenging, confusing, and maybe a little frustrating, please know that you're not alone in this. Ethics requires practice. And you don't have to get everything right overnight. In fact, you can't get everything right overnight. In his account of virtue ethics, the Greek philosopher Aristotle claims that humans have a function, and that function is to flourish. But human flourishing is not merely reactive joy. Rather, it is the result of consistently practicing good decision makings. And when we fail to do so, we just try and do it the next time. So just as a cheetah becomes an excellent cheetah, its function as a cheetah is to run fast, to hunt, and to chase. And it achieves that by practicing. We, too, become excellent human beings by practicing good decision-making, what Aristotle calls rational virtue. When we're faced with two extremes, for example, Aristotle's advice is to act according to the golden mean. For example, between, let's say, cowardice and maybe just complete recklessness or bravado, the golden mean would have us to act courageously. That is to find some balance between holding a bit of fear and a bit of bravado. We practice making the right ethical decision according to the circumstance. That is, we find that mean in each circumstance as it's needed. Over time, doing the right thing becomes second nature to us. And in this way, both we and the communities of which we are a part can flourish. Mm -hmm.